school board meeting. My name is Gloria Smith. I'm the chair of the school board. And I'm very excited to see a lot of people at our board meeting. I know this setting is a little awkward. We're doing the best we can so that we have added a mic to make sure that you can hear us. And we're just excited to have all of you here with us. I'm gonna start with my little usual. We had talked about this at the board before beginnings, our notes for the symphony of the possible. And I feel like we're at a new beginning again. So beginnings ask us to break the pattern of our lives and reconfigure afresh. And that takes courage and great tenderness. So the tenderness is you guys being here with us and us taking the courage to look at this budget again. Our goal is to bring forward a budget that our communities can support and one that moves the district forward in a sustainable way. We we all come to this from different places. We all had a light today. We all are coming with different emotions to the table. There, like, let's acknowledge that we are all that all of the people that you see here sitting at the table are just public servants. We're here for the kids, the same as our administrators. So the, we progress. have a lot of people in the room yeah. today, and we want to make sure that the tone that we set for this, this meeting is the one that. No, we are taking responsibility so, uh, we are continuing to learn with you I would tell and to uh, we want everybody to remind everybody to be I kind in their comments even. to look at uh, ask questions with curiosity yeah, and to no. you know uh, so, there's no wrong questions so please ask all the questions you have and if you have comments please let us know that it is the comment uh, that you're making we're gonna enforce the two minutes uh, just so that the board can get its work done there's going to be plenty of time after the meeting also for board comments but we want to make sure that everybody that is both online and present here has a chance to speak if they have comments for the for the beginning of the meeting uh, with Thank that uh, are there any changes to the agenda no. or members i'll turn this okay. off if you so i we're going to move into public comments uh, right now and please help us model for our kids the uh, you know civility and you have a public comment? if you have a comment please raise your hand both online and in the public and we're going to go back and forth we're not going to separate comments and questions this time can you hear me oh that's true we're we're going to do yeah we can because we're using the mic we're going to do first public and then we're going to move to people online so any members of the public that have a question or a comment please raise your hand Good evening. My name is Larry Gilbert. I live in East Montpelier. I do not have children in the school these days, but uh, three of them went through the whole system what? successfully. It's kind of close so, down the street. Very happy about that. A um, couple of things I want to say thank you. Yeah. All of you for all the hard work that we do. Thank Ms. Wood generally, um, and maybe even less thank more thankless uh, in in the coming days. I I don't I don't know, but can you hold the microphone a little higher? I appreciate thank the work you. that you do. Yeah. Huh? No, this is the guy that's always um, there. The spine yellow. So um, there's so much about this budget that I do not understand. Yeah. Um, you guys are working this for ages, it's and so you can have a lot more information. I imagine that many people like me who come in at the last moment here uh, also have a lot of naive uh, uh, impressions of, of the budget. So I hope you're understanding about that. Um, one question is that I'd be very, very interested in trying to understand what parts of the budget are um, are off limits. In other words, uh, the money that we have to spend, we don't have a choice of non-discretionary, and, and which parts are discretionary. Um, a couple of a uh, couple of. I know there's. It seems like there's two issues like here. One is short term how we create a budget that's going to pass here in the coming weeks, and then how we create a budget for next year and the coming years. So those are two separate things. Um, I think if you go on one of the or two of the long-term ones i think is that the, there's the issue of the career center which passed um and it was um kind of unfortunate i thought to wrap it into the school budget so the career center passed the school budget did not and now we have no opportunity to go back to the career center budget and and explore that anymore is that that's my understanding if i'm wrong about that please I'm happy to be correct so and then uh one last thing would be very interested to hear 
uh, comments from all of you, anybody here really, about what the long term um, opportunities are with the Vermont legislature so uh, we can use our voices. Like the play 30 school districts uh, go through the same process to uh, ought to create some of this. Thank you. Nobody uh, my, I'm Tracy Midwest. I'm a parent and a Middlesex resident. Um, I'm just here to try to pay attention. Um, uh, the decisions affect uh, my kids. I was, I would have been, I, I will cover this post, but I, I would have been one of the families who was affected by. Um, the Jody and Romy uh, kindergartens charging and uh, traveling to Jody for for kindergarten to having to be um, together at the same school. So you know that was kind of a confusing thing, but I think um, in looking at some of the consolidation options that are on the table, I, I think you guys you know are doing a good job. And I respect what you're doing. Um, it's hard to pay attention and maybe time to be here as a parent. So um, you know I have to just be here, pay attention, and try to have everyone get as important as possible. Thank you. We're going to move. It, we'll get to you, Larry, once we start discussing. We're going to move into we have two comments. Into comments in okay. the in deadline, online. So Mark, give Mark a second to switch that. All right, let's okay. Here we have a uh, Becca. Do you want to unmute? Yeah, Sharon. Um, I'll let you see me too. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, I have a two two different questions, or one is a comment, I think, and one is a question. No, they're both questions. Anyway, um, the first one is about um if we do we um know the number or percentages of people by town in our district to um pay based on income versus pay based on property value um i have a a a, co a work colleague who lives in the um in a different school district and they sent out to all their voters a breakdown of of that information so that we could all sort of really get a sense of of what the actual cost is to different folks in the in the district and how that cost is shared across the schools in the district and the towns. So I'm wondering if that's something I can, I'll email it to you all. If the document, it's really, really rich and full of really helpful information. And I would love to see if it's something that we could put together in this part of the budget process and actually make part of the process for coming years too. Um, so I'll email that to all of you after. Um, and then my second comment or second part of my comment or question is about, um, you know, as we're talking about cuts, and I know we, it's all, it's really important to all of us to think about, you know, the folks who actually interact with our kids and really enrich the student experience across our schools. And I'm wondering if, um, you know, some, as we sort of lose enrollment in some of our schools, if some of our existing administrative structures are no longer serving us as well as they could have, and if it's time to take a hard look at some of the, the ratio of administrative staff, especially at U32 or some of our other um, uh, schools versus our ratio of student uh, folks who actually touch students' lives every day. So um, I just want to put a plug in, I guess this is more of a comment than a question, <laughs> I'll put a plug in for really looking at some of those ratios and if there's um, some cost savings that we can accrue there. Um, so, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Becca. We had one more hand and now I left it. Anybody else online that has a question? I do not see any other. I don't see. Okay. But well, well, is there something in the chat? chat? It, okay, let's see. Is that, oh, there's four in the chat. <clears throat> okay, yeah, it just says someone might mute. mute. <laughs> Your microphone's mute. That's all it was. Okay. So, uh, if Mark oh, a minute to flip oh, your yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I think you're good. Just remember, we can try. Yeah, nice and high. 
Okay, thank you everybody for your, for your questions and comments. We are gonna get started with the meeting. It, some of those questions will get resolved while we are at the meeting. So let's get started. Okay, our, the next part of our, our meeting is our student report. And we have Willow with us and Linnea. I don't know how we're gonna do with the mic, but do you guys wanna talk? It's really loud. Can you hear them? Are you guys good if we talk this loud? Perfect. Without the mic is the best. Yeah. It's Jen in the back. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's full in the audience with the mic. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I might do something about yeah. it. The mic is needed. The mic, the mic is needed for people for accessibility. For online. Yeah. 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 No, for those in the audience. Mm -hmm. All right. If you guys can't hear me or will, just let us know. We'll try to project, but um, just raise your hand or something and we can like yell a little bit louder. <laughs> All right, so stage 32, which is our theater program here at U32, is competing this weekend at the Highland Center for the Arts Theater. Um, and they also gave a performance for the middle school today during school. Um, the competition this weekend is gonna be regional. So if they win this, then they will be going to New England. They will be going to New England, which is, well, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, that's good. Um, we also had our winter sports banquet last night. Natalie Beauregard and Dominic Confessi won the principal's award, so good for them. Um, we also had a smaller food drive, trying to get that a tradition. I didn't know it was last night, so we're going to have more prep for it in the spring season. So if you guys go to that, make sure to bring some food. Um, so the spring fling is coming up. It's on the 30th, and um, a lot of people are getting excited. They're getting ready, getting their dresses, their suits. Um, so that's exciting. And next month is April, and April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So the conversation and most clubs are bringing together a kind of a presentation for a callback, and we're making um bracelets with the color teal um, to support survivors. And we're gonna get some guest speakers to come and talk and show how you can help someone in an unhealthy relationship, or if someone needs help, we're gonna figure out how to do it and make our community more accessible for everyone and make them feel heard and overall good. And Pep Squad is also running a kind of a winter wellness we had to cancel our last one due to like <clears throat> weather and stuff. So this time we are going to have a ton of different activities for everyone to participate. There's gonna be a volleyball tournament that hopefully the seniors will win. And we're gonna do <laughs> a movie in one of the rooms. There's gonna be snacks, there's gonna be bracelet making and you can go on a walk. And it's gonna be, I think the week, be the week, the Friday before break. So it gets everyone just kind of ready and good. Um, student teacher conferences are coming up on the 22nd, which is a Monday, um, and all the students have the day off, which is great, because it's been a <laughs> And spring is coming, and I, for one, am ready for sunshine and warmth. I'm over the snow, and I think also it brings more of a excitement to the students here, especially because once we start getting outside and graduation's coming around and everyone's hopeful for the future and just a thank you to all of you here. I know it's hard to do this and the conversations we have is kind of uncomfortable at times, but no, there's there's hope at the end. So let's <laughs> do it together. <laughs> um, just kind of bouncing off of that. <laughs> Sports are starting soon. Which is super exciting. We got preseason for our girls across, boys across, which is over at Montpelier. Um, we have like, like just everybody's just starting out. We have softball, baseball, so that's super exciting. Um, it'll be great. Yeah, and that is the students' report. <laughs> uh, any questions? Yeah, <laughs> any questions? I think I can project. <laughs> I'll use my teacher voice. Um, 
So how how is the morale in you know at this time of year? It seems like it's really hard with more snow and everything. What's the energy level like? Low. I definitely <laughs> I definitely saw it today where it everyone's just a little stressed out. Right around now, everyone's trying to get in their work before spring break, and that's normally when there's big projects coming. So the Advanced Expo are finishing our Hamlet unit so we have a ton of work for that and then I know there was a physics test today mm -hmm. so everyone's just kind of getting through everyone's a little stressed out but stress is okay but overall I think everyone is ready for the warmth but everyone seems okay right now everybody's sick and like <laughs> tests yeah projects it's just like okay but we'll get through it this always happens it's nice out today so that's yeah encouraging yes I'm enjoying it <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Seeing no other questions, thank you both, and thank you for the energy that you bring to the meeting. It's really needed. So, let's come to the superintendent and central office leadership cult report. Yeah, I'll just highlight one piece. I don't know if Kara, oh, oh, it's on. No, it's on. Okay. Yeah. Kara, do you want to speak a little bit about some of our work around seclusion and restraint and some new training? Sure. Um, can everyone hear me? Yep. Being heard is not typically a challenge on my part, so I'll assume that folks can hear me. Um, la about a year ago, we shared with you that we were taking a look at analyzing our social emotional structures and the frameworks that we use for students with the most significant social emotional behavioral needs. Um, and at that time, we pulled together a work group and started to compare our current framework, which was handled with care with best practice and what we know that our kids needed. Um, and since that time, we made a shift to CPI, which is more of a focus on de-escalation, connecting with students prior to behavioral concerns. Um, and we made the shift. And it's wild to say, just looking back in the year, we've made that shift. Um, and we were looking at the data last week and noticed that really the, the highest extent of um, of intervention for students is when they are struggling to be safe with themselves and others. And when we intervene with students at that level, we, there's documentation and reports that are required. And we have a 90% decrease in uh, the kind of the most severe level of intervention, which is really exciting and speaks to the great work of our paras and PIs and our staff and sort of really embracing a new approach and focusing on the earlier level of work for our students with those needs. Um, I've been looking at other data related to discipline referrals and the other ways that we can measure that, but I know it's sort of the most intense intervention. Uh, our schools have done really great work. Thanks, Kara. Thank you, Kara. Any questions about that? No, I was just hoping that you could highlight that 90% and for our communities to know about that and that it's a big shift for us as we talk about mental health. We've been visiting every school and talking about with our emotional learning, and this is really also part of, of, of that. So I just want to make sure, because sometimes we struggle with asking questions at the board. So I was hoping that we could highlight something that we could all be excited about. Are there any specific questions for our principals in cult, the whole cult team? No, central office. That includes central office and leadership team. So people know what cult is. Uh, okay, well, thank you. It's always great to read their, that, that report and really gives us an insight of all the hard work that you guys do. So with that, we're going to move into board operations. Hopefully, I'm not totally deafening you, Caroline. I'm sorry. No, but I will say if, it that works distance. much better when the microphone is further from the speakers. I don't know if it can hear, but then the audience is that there was no problem. Oh, oh I maybe good then. Three hours of that is um, gonna not do it. Try. Okay. Really hard. So, okay, we're gonna. Can I say something? Who is this person who members as well, right? Can I ask? Yeah. Anyone, anyone, anyone who would like but their thing up right now? Okay. Already to yeah. Yeah. Oh. okay. So I, I was going to start this, com this conversation also by just having us introduce ourselves. This is our first uh, board meeting. I was going to ask you to, your name, your town, committees that you serve, and if you're an officer of the board, just say that. So start, Chris. Um, good evening. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Chris Bay. I'm uh, one of the Middlesex representatives. 
So I'm on, on the policy committee. Thank you, Diane. Okay. And so, <clears throat> Diane Nichols Fleming, I'm a representative from Berlin. Um, I'm on the steering committee, negotiations, and quality, and also finance. Is that all of them? <laughs> yeah, it's a tough act to follow. Up. But I'm Jonathan Goddard. I'm a uh, representative from Berlin, and I'm also on the policy committee. Chris, I'm Nikhil Leclerc. I'm from Worcester, and I'm on Ed Quality, Finance, and Steering Committee now. <laughs> Uh, Natasha Eckhart, also from Worcester, on policy and, and quality. I'm Michelle Sefko from Callis, and I am on finance. And welcome, Michelle. It's our new board member. Uh, my name is Linnea Darrow. I'm a junior here at E32. Um, I'm from Worcester, and I'm a junior representative of the board. Thank you. My name is Joshua Sevitz. I'm a Middlesex resident. I'm on the Negotiations Committee and the New Career Center rep for our district. Hi, I'm Ursula Stanley. I am a representative from Middlesex. I am our vice chair. I am the chair of the Ed Quality Committee. I serve on the Finance Committee and the Steering Committee. <laughs> I'm Suzanne Gann, the District Business Administrator. And I'm Megan Roy, the Superintendent. I'm on the floor and I'm the, I'm the chair, as you know, and I sit in general committee. Let's just say that. Go. Um, my name is Lola Mashkari. I am the senior representative and I am from Middlesex. And I'm Keely Sloan and I'm a rep from Berlin. I'm Daniel Keeney. Uh, I live in Callis and I'm on the finance committee the Ed Quality Committee and the Steering Committee. And I'm Zach Sullivan. I'm from East Montpelier and I'm on the Finance Committee and the Ed Quality Committee. Okay. So with that, I just wanted you guys to you know it's our new start. And also in our in our packet, we always include I can still killing you, Caroline. I see your face and I don't know what to do about it. If, in in our in our packet, we always have our norms. I'm not gonna go through our norms, but it's our first meeting since we reorganized in our packet, we always include our norms. We start also by the little comment we had about a, how much time we have for public comment, and we had added some uh, some procedures that we use and some helpful information also about a agenda key, so you know what all of those uh, what all of those mean. With that, I'm gonna just get us really jumping in into our uh, into our finance work tonight. I know that you guys all got the finance uh, memo just this afternoon because we were trying to finish it up uh, between after our finance committee yesterday and and today. So I was thinking that I was just gonna for the purpose of being clear and not all the community members have this in front of them. I was just gonna read the first the, what what it is about that we're gonna do right now, just the first two ball two, two bullets so that it is clear. So our job today is to identify a budget, uh, a budget revote date and timeline for the budget adoption warning and informational meeting. And then the second part of the meeting is provide the administration with a budget target. This target will give the administration an overall direction as well as enough information to make determinations about reductions in force in order to meet contractual obligations. For this, we put two sub bullets so that it, this will answer some of the questions that were asked before. It, it is the perspective of the Finance Committee that will be important for the board to focus in this discussion on the net education spending. The goal is a budget that meaningfully reduces spending while preserving the opportunities for each of our students. Our hope is that this discussion will result in a budget that our communities can support and one that will step towards making our district sustainable in years to come. And the second part is the leadership team will continue to look at all proposals through the lenses that they have been working through this past years, educational quality, equitable distribution of resources and student need. So with that, eh, let's look at the timeline. I'm gonna give it to Megan. Sure, we started with just offering the board a discussion point. Um, we did consult with our attorney. Um, there is some guidance in legis not le in legislation, in law, about budget revote timelines. 
ours is a little bit more complicated because the board chose to mail all ballots. You also need to decide if you intend to mail your revote ballots. And if you do, you will need to add a, a little bit more time to your um, to your timeline to factor in the printing and mailing of those ballots. So what's in this document is, um, well, I frame it this way, and then I'll run through what's offered here and it is offered as a discussion point this is really what the board needs to decide um july 1st is an important date for the board because by statute if there is no adopted budget by july 1st the district starts that fiscal year operating on 87 percent of this year's budget later on we'll talk about what that looks like but that is a significant cut so the goal is to have a passed budget before July 1st. And so you want to balance the time you need to develop a good budget, communicate it well to your communities, and also have enough time to potentially vote again. So the timeline offered here um, has you adopting a revised budget on April 3rd, very quickly after that, warning the budget and starting the process of printing the ballots. You would then um, offer an informational meeting. This is right now penciled in as your April 17th board meeting. Again, that's for you to discuss. And then you would be able to vote either on April 30th or May 7th. And that depends on whether or not you want to mail ballots. If you want to mail ballots again to everyone, you would want to aim for May 7th. And if you are um, not mailing ballots to everyone, you could vote on April 30th. We think that timeline would give the board one other opportunity to vote if the second budget fails, which obviously it's the hope that it won't, but you want to plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. Happy to answer questions that people have or anything like that. Go ahead, Michaela. So there, we don't legally have to mail all ballots because we did it the first time. Correct. Our choice. And if we choose not to, people can still request after the yes. ballot. Yes, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They would be bound by the earlier deadline if people request the ballot. So the the what the advice is, is the language is they, the ballots are available 20 days before the vote or as soon as possible, which is, that's pretty vague. So that the this timeline assumes uh, 20 days if you are not mailing them, and we basically add about 10 days if you are. Um, so that the 20 day marker would give us time to mail people who requested yeah. mail them ballots. It's still tight. It, it's still tight, but we and we consult it with with our with our lawyer. So yeah, it's still tight, but we would have the 20 in essence 20 days. <clears throat> Judge Ross. Is there reason to believe that the legislature may come up with another law or be changing some sort of rules that would conflict with mailing the ballots? I know that because we had mailed ballots this year, it sort of shut down. It was the it was the opinion that that shut down any sort of or created confusion if we wanted to re, like uh, not. If we wanted to cancel our um, budget this year, would there be any, is, is there anything on the horizon that might conflict with printing and mailing ballots that might cause confusion again? I, I would say, I cannot predict what the legislature right. would do, but I would say that the advice we've been given around budget uh, timing and mailing and printing came from the Secretary of State's office, and okay. they have issued that guidance, so it feels relatively safe, at least from a um timeline standpoint I, I, my sense is the legis my sense <laughs> right this is not sure uh that they feel like they're the h850 the law they passed that allowed you to revote that was their temporary fix yes, and they have turned their attention to longer term okay. looking ahead that does not mean that, that they won't do something in the interim but that's my sense is that they are they have yeah turned their attention to something different and aren't likely to do anything okay. that would adjust yeah. this. Yeah, and the only confusion now could come from us, right? So we just have to be clear when the ballots will be available, that they can request the ballot. So it's just our communication has to be pretty straightforward. Okay. Ursula? If we mail the ballots for this vote, would we have this exact same timeline, essentially the 20 days? 
of for a second vote. Uh, you would decide if you would again have the dis the um, discretion to mail or not mail. So the second time you could just, which would be your third vote, you could decide to. But yes, everything else about the it's a repeated timeline. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and even if we had to do it twice with paper, we would still, even with mailing ballots, we would have two opportunities, like Megan said. Do we know the cost of mailing all the ballots? Again, uh, we, I don't remember. We, we, I mean, if we if we you don't have it. it immediately, that's fine. Yeah, we, yeah. we have it. And right now, it's more about the timing, right? I think sure. we would want to be responsible. But, but if we're looking to save money, we certainly would want to know. How much? I mean, if we're talking half a million dollars or oh, no, 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 like five, it's, it's like, like less than five thousand oh, dollars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. Yeah, I would have to look it up. Yeah. I'm yeah. not certain about that, okay. but it's definitely not, not that. Yeah. 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 It's around, yeah, nine or ten, but it's it was like two for yeah. okay. Any any other questions with would you guys be careful? Be careful. Would be okay with this proposed timeline right now? It would give us, you know, two weeks before we are adopting a budget, which would mean that the work that we do tonight is important because in order for them to come prepare at that meeting, we would not be picking and choosing. We would be adopting a budget, right? So I don't think we should have another meeting intervening just to touch base, um, even if it's virtual, uh, just because, it's, you know, saying that at the same meeting that we're going to have with the responses, also we have to vote on it doesn't do much time for more reflection if needed. I think as the board may, discusses that, what what I would say is if you are adding a meeting, I would say the only feasible thing you could do is push back that April 3rd adoption date and add one after because uh, next week is next week. We won't have had an opportunity to pull it together. And the week after that are some pretty key superintendent search dates that I don't oh. think you want to adjust. Yes. So there isn't a, an ability to add one before. So if the board decides that they want two meetings, I would suggest it be April 3rd and then April 10th and adoption on the 10th. And then that, then you'd be looking at the probably May 7th instead of the 30th. So, so we have for the board. Really long what I mean, I, I don't know if anyone thought because the steering committee wants to share about April 3rd because there was some discussion about um also not delaying your configuration engagement um and so it is actually slated to be a pretty lengthy meeting because of that yeah I don't know so we would be yeah we would what, what we said we were trying to work in our work plan today at the steering committee and what we were trying to do is what we will do we will present the strategic plan and the configuration uh, not study the configuration what we got to see as a finance configuration committee has been presented to the board and it would be an opportunity for community also to be there this meeting is going to take place in Cal. so we would be sort of advancing that work that we, we would start with that presentation so community members also know that we are serious about where we're going right that we are studying this they would understand our strategic plan they will understand the options early on just as us they would be involved in that conversation at the beginning of that conversation and then we would adopt the budget with the guidelines for right now because we really don't have a lot of time to no, no. to to go back and forth and i think what we need to do is be concrete in 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 you know if they use those lenses right now what we can control is the spending that's all we can control is the spending so if we are able to give them a target we talked at the finance committee about trying to be you know bring our spending from 16 Point fourteen percent down between ten and thirteen percent. So we could ask them to bring a budget back, and I'm just giving examples, you know. So please, and I want everybody to have a chance to talk. I'm just summarizing a little bit of what we talked just yesterday. This is, mm -hmm. and this is, you know, it's not a, it's a marathon. So uh, one option would be to get guidance from them, and they brought some numbers for us uh, today too. What you know, how much would it mean to have a uh, ten percent? We wanted to start by you guys understanding what it would be it, and for community members to understand to what it would be to operate on an 87% budget if we didn't have a budget. That's one marker. Then what is the 10% budget? What is a 12% budget? What does it mean to the taxes as we know right now, right? Because we the EO is going to change because we are all interconnected and the, you know, the ad fund is a collective effort, right? It's what we all bring of cost. So so that's where we were. I would be open for other 
finance committee members, or we could just start it and we could just, you know, popcorn as you feel that you want to make a, a comment in what would, what would you be comfortable with in, and I know it's hard to say because we, you were there, Chris. No, no, no. Yeah. But, but so. you know, there's, there's no, um, we are there yet um, in terms of, if we say 10%, um, we know what that means in terms of um, what we have to cut. But we don't know what that what cut that means. Mm -hmm. Where is it being cut, uh, and and why? You know, so you know we can we can start that when we say okay, we're, you know, if we go to ten percent. That's I think one point nine million off the mm -hmm. budget. Yes. Okay. So in addition, uh, more than what you've already got. Yeah. Right. So, in yeah. addition, so so where where would that likely come from? Uh, and you know, so having that discussion in terms of specifics will inform our discussion. Yeah, I mean, I, I can. Oh, sorry. Oh, I know. I, the only thing I was going to say is what Finance Committee discussed is um, to some extent, administration can't go back to do its work until we have direction that we are in a little bit of a chicken and egg okay. scenario. What we did say, though, is we know that we proposed reductions to the board last year. So the first thing we would do is look at those again to see if they are still relevant. That was around 850,000. That does not mean all of them are still something we would continue to recommend, but we did recommend it a year ago. So that's the first thing we would do. The second thing would be we would revisit the other recommended reductions that the board restored um, again to determine whether or not that is where we should go. That number alone tips if we were to take all of that. We don't know if we would. Um, but it's a starting place for administration's work because we made those recommendations last year using the same lenses. So if it helps the board to know that that would, is where we would start. And the second place we would go is there are additional specifically enrollment related reductions that we could make because our enrollment continues to decline. And so we would look at that. So if if the board and we would look at other functional areas, including administration, because I know that's always a question. Um, so that's where we know we would start that does not give you the specifics that you are talking about you're right you won't get that until we present it but that is a starting point for how administration intends to start. So, and, sorry. so can you can you hold on can you hold on one minute chris i'm gonna let joshua speak did you have your hand up but to yeah, diane question. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let Joshua go and then Diane just in order of how I had it. And then you know. And then oh you know. Okay. Joshua. I think Megan said it exactly chick on anything. Like we don't know what is we need to give the administration guidance and then they will decide based on the three pillars of our uh lenses. Our uh, the three lenses um of what we use as our guidance in these situations. And I just want to caution us to just not, um, as, as we hear back next meeting from the administration, um, you know, just just caution us and in terms of our preferences as to what's being cut and just and proceed with faith in the administration's decisions. And so the only thing I was going to say was going back to the one question that was out there too, as to what are the pockets we can touch? Mm -hmm. What are the pockets we can't touch? Because then that also shows a little tipping of the scale. And, and, um, and I'm not trying to second, I know I get painted as the person who doesn't trust and doesn't um, <laughs> accept, but it's more so having you know, having a, a time, a chance to look at that. To me, I'm wondering if we're able to get to a conversation, one about we know what pocket can be touched, and then what is the percentage of what we're going to look at in that? So as some of the categories you name, is there a formula or a ratio that we as a board are comfortable with between direct services, other functional services? What is that going to look at? And I would also remind us, as what was on the news, one of the challenges for our schools are is the level of work that has to keep on going. You know, so there was the free Narcan, which is a very important and, and needs to be there. But again, it's an additional weight that we put on our buildings and on our staff 
um, which is why I think there's so much frustration out there about the ed funding and the formulas for it, because we as that community center is is having to take on so much while there's all these other initiatives and things. Uh, so a, a couple things that I think it's important for the board to understand. So first of all, I do not think it's judicious for the board to tell us what functional areas to go after. That is really difficult for administration to do its work. It ties our hands. We do, however, and I said this to finance committee, if there is something that you know you will refuse to take our recommendation about, we need to know it now so we don't start. So there is an element of that, but I would not advise against a go look at your functional areas this way. There is some information because folks did ask what it looks like, just how it's broken down. That's in your packet. It's still useful information for you. What's important for us is to know the magnitude of reductions. And the other thing that I would say, because you've heard this message before, not just from me, but from the team, there are limits to what, I don't have a dollar limit in my head. If I did, if I had a thought in my head, I would ask you for it. But there are limits to what we can reduce in our current structure. We know that. We know the magnitude of reductions, though, that we do think we could continue to deliver services and meet the needs of kids. We we have been looking at that. That number is in, in the million range. So, so yes, we do think there are reductions that we can make. And just like we have in the past, we would also, if you gave us a target and we did the work we would show you what it would look like and we would say, we don't recommend it, here's where we think we would land. So we would still do that. <clears throat> I don't know that that's helpful, except that the, the piece that is a theme is it's going to be difficult in our current structure and yet we understand that we need to make reductions and we think we can and we think we can and in a way that still allows us to meet student needs. Daniel? Uh, I had a couple of points. One was, um, the in terms of the capital plan and the and the budget for the capital, I'm a big fan of the capital plan. First of all, I want to say that up front. <laughs> I think a lot of districts are are in a, a worse situation than us because they have not had a capital plan. They have not kept up with their capital plan. But I'm also realizing where we are. I want to understand why nothing in the coming year's budget that is. Um, up, up for investment and the capital plan can't be moved down one year. I think that's an important question to answer in the course of this. Um, similarly, we had a discussion earlier this school year about the importance of appropriate staffing in our central office um, because we were at, at a situation where it didn't feel tenable. And uh, in terms of what, what the office's capacity was. so. I, I come in to that conversation with some skepticism that anything can be cut from the central office budget, but I also want to understand where we are, re reflect uh, where we are um, relative to other districts in terms of our central office staff and in terms of our general administrative costs. We haven't asked for that before, I realize, but I think that's an important point. And I also think that tonight, we, before we direct the administration to come up with an amount to, to reduce the budget by, I think we need to examine how much, if any, of the fund balance we want to contribute to this problem we're in. And there's a note in the memo for those who haven't seen it yet about what yeah. the fund balance flexibility is. Yeah. Daniel, I have a couple of comments. Sorry, Caroline. I have a couple of Comments. It, 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 starting with the capital plan, I think there's several of us here. Um, Carol, you're here. There's several of people here that have been part of where we where we were before. Sort of firefighters putting fires all over our building, not taking care of our building. Two percent. If you see the graph there, two percent of capital plan doesn't totally cover what we need to be covering for each of our buildings as they are right now. So it would make it, it's like moving on what you, it's almost like you have a strategic plan and then decide that you're not going to take the action steps of your strategic plan. So it's, it's kind of similar. And I know it just feels like building, but the building affects the outcomes of our kids. And I think sometimes we refuse and it affects our, our staff, it affects our students. So if we, you know, if we had less facilities, Maybe that would be the case. It would still be in our facility and we would have want to take care. But that 2% is not going to break where we are 
right now for for adding money to 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 this to this conversation. So I wouldn't want us to go backwards in the way that we we've been creating systems for for a reason, and and it's taking it's taking a long time to get here to be able to hire a, a, a person that is in charge of our buildings to to really take care of our buildings to not be always in you know in putting down fires, you know, instead of, and I know Suzanne could even speak more eloquently like me, I am really passionate about this. It took a really long time to get here. I don't think we can go backwards in that it wouldn't be, it, it, it wouldn't be responsible. It, Daniel, it, 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 Ursula and then Joshua. Oh, sure, and I, I would say perhaps the same may be true for the central office as well. I mean, our buildings will continue in the future, our buildings, will continue to play an important role in the district, no matter how many we have. And same with the central office. I mean, that's that's going to be key. And I think staffing that appropriately <clears throat> still going forward is great. I don't know, it may be hard to refill some positions as well. And I know some folks are open to looking at that, and I am too, but I just thought I would. And I, and I guess then I have a comment yeah. that I think is helpful about the capital. Okay, and I, I oh the capital. Plan. Okay, I just with the one last question that Daniel you were raising is that I I just wanted to think about that when we say that leadership team is looking with three lenses: educational quality, student need, and equitable distribution of report of resources. That's everything. That is, they're looking at central office. They're looking at the budget. They're looking. It's it's a whole. It's an equitable way to look at our system as a whole. It doesn't mean that anything is off. Just because we say that we're using the three lenses, it doesn't mean that all we're looking at is staff. Otherwise, it wouldn't be responsible. I just want to point out, Renet, as it relates to capital plan, we have a big unknown cost in only one of our buildings, and that's PCBs. So if if we discover, because we and we're very glad that that, it, that we are covered for the cost of finding this out, but it does not cover the cost. And Stephen, feel free to weigh in, but. Yeah. That would come out, that is an unplanned expense. It would come out of your capital plan and might already blitz your capital plan. So further doing that is we risky. We have a uh, full preliminary uh, reports back on, um, and we'll have a full report out as soon as they provide it. Um, we've identified where uh, the vast amount of PCDs are in the school um, with the first round of testing. Um, it's the fireproofing that is on the entire first floor on every beam. Um, that's in this building um, for, that wasn't completely renovated. Yeah. So we have no idea what kind of remediation, but it's going to take uh, quite a bit from what we're hearing from our consultants right now. So I I, I hate to pull up the capital bubble so quickly, but I will tell you that we have a very large unknown cost. And do we have to remediate as soon as possible? Uh, there, so it could take us up to two years to do all of the remediation, uh, but we just are need to begin some of that process as soon as they have a plan that's approved by uh, about six or seven government agencies. So, um, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty big process, but we're just at the beginning of it. We'll have a better report within about a month, so we'll know. I also think that would underscore the importance of fund balance and maintaining our fund balance for unknown, un unpredictable expenses, predictable, unpredictable expenses, as it were, in this case. Ursula, do you have something? Um, Natasha. Natasha's had her hand up. Natasha. Um, so what it sounds like to me, based on suggestions that have been brought up and responses that are given, is that, and I may be wrong, but what it sounds like is the only option is to cut staff. And if that is, because that's what it sounds like, then let us know that. So when we are thinking about this, that's the lens that I'm looking at it through. Because when I hear, could we look at this? Can we look at this? Can we look at this? And the response is, no, we can't. And here's why. What it sounds like is staff. So if that's the case, I just want transparency that that's the case so that I can modify how I have to think about looking at budget cuts. I think we've been really clear. The only way we can realize any kind of significant reductions, which again depends on what you ask us to do, is through staff. And that is because it's 80% of our budget. That does not mean 
So I don't, that think that's been, be, I don't think that's been explicitly stated to just now. But that's what we've said every budget we've ever brought you is 80% of our budget is staffing. This is what we can bring you. I, that is that is absolutely been our message. It will not be the only thing we look at. It is never the only thing we look at. We absolutely have to scrub all of our lines. But the magnitude, I think, unless the board is deciding not to make significant reductions, that is your choice. But the magnitude of the reduction that I believe you have to make, there is no way to do that without reducing staff. That is the unfortunate part of this process. And I think we've been really clear about that. Ursula and then Michaela. So I'm going to respond to that and then also talk on the fund balance and capital plan as well. But we've talked about this budget and the fact that we were going to have hard choices coming down the line for three years. Mm -hmm. And for three years, it's been staffed. They brought us reductions last year that were staffed. We said, no, we're not ready. We'll do it next year. And it is next year. And we did not do it. And so here we are having to do a revote. And yeah. so we can't keep pushing it down. We we keep thinking that if we reconfigure enough, we're going to be able to cover all of this spending and we're going to get to a point where even that's not going to be enough. We need to be honest and it's been brought to us for three years and we need to remember that. It's our job. We're elected to remember beyond just each meeting, all of the information is being brought to us. And I'm going to say taking money from the capital fund or our general fund is a one-time solution that is not lasting. It will not help us next year. It will make it worse next year as well. Okay. The capital fund or the what fund? Sorry. General, no, general fund. No. Just one balance. So, um, okay, um, a couple of things. I, I do hear what everyone's saying about the fund balance and capital um, projects, et cetera. I do. I think. I think we're currently in an un, a, a, an unusual situation. So I don't think we should necessarily close the door one hundred percent on all of that. Maybe it's not pulling from it, but maybe it's not transferring the million dollars in the budget out to other funds um, because that is a lot of money. I mean, it's not, that's all, that's, that's a lot of money. Um, and so if we are talking about cutting people, um, I'm curious what positions are currently open and if those could just not be filled for a year um, or if we could creatively um, fill them with current staff. Um, and then I know at least for myself and probably others in the community and on the board, just cutting teachers doesn't, is not going to fly for me. Um, so I, 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 you know, it will make sense to cut some teaching positions. Absolutely. Especially if it's, you know, creating more equity across the schools, for example, but um, you know, can we look at sharing principles across some of our smaller schools or that sort of thing? And I know you mentioned you're going to look at administration, and I have faith that you will. And I want the budget to spot us to have a mixture of a diversity of positions eliminated. Chris? Yeah. Um, so I'm it staff is eight staff is eight percent of our expenses. Um uh, and it's all staff. And so when we're looking at cuts, um all staff should be created equal rather than some staff being more equal than others. Uh and I know that that's difficult, you know, lift for you folks. And it sure. I we, we have had staff cuts, it has always been teachers, um, counselors, or nurses. Always. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me just finish. Yeah, um, we have had attrition this year where some, we, you know, we added back some nursing staff and some counseling staff to the tune of $182,000. That add back this year, and correct me if I'm misspeaking, because, you know, I think we sometimes we let each other say things that are not factually correct, and we should correct it um, so that we're all on the same page. Um, but we added back $182,000 into the budget. Um, and that is not what the budget is at. 
Um, because I think you know, 58% of our community voted against the budget, and it wasn't because of a hundred eighty two thousand dollar item add back. Um, it was you know, unfortunate confluence of things that some of which we had no control of. Um, but I agree that we probably need to cut staff, hopefully through attrition, although it sounds like we already had the efficiency uh, when we come to the first round of the staff cuts. Um, and but I, I'm thinking this needs to be more equitably distributed in terms of who we're cutting things, or we just decide not to do things this year that we may have done before uh, and just put them off. I think Stephen makes a fairly good point about we have this unfunded um, remediation problem with PCBs that we need to deal with. And, and you know, who knows what that's going to be? And it's going to start this, this year of some. I probably will hit the next budget here. More. In our next budget. So the planning would have planning. to start <laughs> first. Yeah. Yeah. The planning would have to start yeah. first. I mean, yeah. you're not going to be able to hire no, 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 okay. But the, well, we're talking about a year from you know, right? So, so we have that planning to do. I tend to agree that we don't use fund balance um, because I agree. I think once you're dipping into that, that can become a, you know, a, we, we need Narcam after that if we keep doing that. Um, but, you know, but it's a serious discussion that across the board, not one section of our of our staff members, because if staff is our community, you know, it's going to be shared, should be a shared sacrifice, not a cherry pick sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I'm a trip Go ahead. I, I just want to say one thing on the question of the fund balance. I don't I don't know if now is the right time. I don't know if this is the right amount. But that fund balance builds up because we put forward a budget that was more than we put forward a budget in the past that was more than we needed. And we tax at higher rates than we strictly needed to. And I mean a budget is a good faith effort. You don't, you know, you you're not always going to get it perfect. But at some point, I think it's also fair to say if we've, you know, if we have, have run over that some of that should go back to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. If we, you know, you know, if in the past we've overshot and if they've worn that. Um, some of that fund balance, as we've discussed in these meetings, has come from the fact that we've been unable to staff positions, which means we are not serving the students the way that we needed to and the way that we maybe wanted to or administration wanted to. And so we had money left over and it wasn't necessarily like, hey, we found some extra pennies under the couch. This was a, we didn't fill positions that we intended to fill, despite trying. I'm not saying y'all didn't try. I'm just saying it didn't happen because of the situation we're in. Daniel. I think both of those things are true. I think also, in light of what's you know the news from Megan and Stephen about PCBs, I think I want to retain more of the fund balance than I came in here wanting to retain. But I think I mostly land on Zach's side of things that I think it's appropriate in the course of this to at least return some of that fund balance to the regular to the regular budget and to and to cut less because of it. Go ahead, Joshua. Um, I think that um, we should be careful about using the phrase returning our fund balance to the taxpayers. Not every district is in the privileged position that we are in to be allowed by our community to hold that. In some districts, school boards are required to give that back. That, and that's that's something that is unique to us, not all districts have that. So I just want to throw that out and be careful about saying let's return it because if that catches fire, you know, it's a vote to say we have to return that money every year, regardless of what problems are coming. So what I, I think I, I I'm hearing you all and I'm I'm sorry Chris, I was getting a little but and it's not usually in the style, but I was getting a little tense there. And 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 that's not you know, we, I know, and it's you know, and it's and it's hard. It, what we're doing, it what we're doing is really hard. But this is the the this is not the moment to not trust our administrators. And I know that, the, and I know that that's not what you're trying to do. But just just hear me out. 
we if we use those three lenses in you know just stop rolling your eyes at me because it's just like I'm i get not, not you okay. <laughs> not you and they know who they are so it's just like because it just stresses idea. me I'm out dying. i know it so stresses glad. me out so i'm i'm trying my dear best today and you know there's a lot going on and i'm a little stressed that we can really this has been coming for three years guys this has been coming we knew this fiscal cliff was coming Two years ago, I remember this meeting we were at East Montpelier, and I remember leaving that in, that meeting in tears, which is not what I like to do. Like I love these meetings, but we are not making progress. We need to make progress as a team. We knew that this fiscal cliff was going, that the that the ESSER funds were going to disappear, that we didn't know what the yield they were going to put. We are in unprecedented times in our legislature too. We don't have a lot of support on public education. Um, should I let you speak, Suzanne? Because I'm getting too emotional. No, yeah. no, I'm just ha I'm happy to help with the fund balance discussion. I feel like, and I'm I'm gonna throw out a feeling. <laughs> uh, it we need some direction on dollars so yeah. that as a leadership team we can go back and talk about what to bring to you. And in that package that we bring to you, I'm hearing that you would like a proposal of some use of your fund balance if we want to analyze what we think is a, a practical amount and that you'd like us to analyze the capital plan. These are things that I'm hearing from you. I think we need a chance to do that as a leadership team. A direction of dollar amount would yeah. be really helpful. So what what them, is our target? Are we hitting? Yeah, are we so aiming for one million, two million? What are we looking for? Yeah. So um, if we give them a. I'm, I'm going to let you speak in a minute. So if we give them a target, and we say those are you know you can see be creative, be creative with with using the three lenses. We give you a target of 10 or 12 percent. I know because we need to lower our and they can come back to us and say, you know, it's if we dip into here and there, we can we can meet student need and still provide opportunities for, for our kids. We can't do it on 10 percent. It needs to be, you know, whatever it is, it needs to be 13. We can't do it on under 12. But we at least allow them and trust them. You know, they have demonstrated to us year after year. You see the reports. We just went through the cult report. Like they have our students back. They are the person, the people most qualified to make these decisions. So we, we just need to allow them and have have a little trust. To allow, give them a little trust. And um, Natasha, go ahead. Um, so two things. One. Um, I. <laughs> get really frustrated when people throw around the phrase, we need to trust our administrators, because I don't think any of us are saying we don't trust our administrators or our leadership team. So every time that, that phrase is put out there, I like, um, sorry, I was going to do a clue reference, flames at the sides of my face. Um, <laughs> um, so I would appreciate if we just kind of like took that out of the conversation, because I, I don't think that that's where anyone's coming from. Second of all, um, other people said it better than I did in terms of staffing. I understand the lens we have to look at. We have never been brought anybody but teachers, nurses, counselors, paras. Um, I would love to keep everybody. I know that this building has operated with more administrators than it operated with when I went here, and we had more students when I was here. So I just, I would like that if staffing is brought to us, that we are not just seeing the same group of staffing all the time, because those are the people who are directly interfacing with our students. So that's, that is what I'm asking. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, Chris. Um, our administrators have more to do than they did. There's just there are different mandates I think that respond to some. I'm recognizing that. And there are teacher run buildings. Right. <laughs> so so uh, uh, what I would propose is that uh, we have some get some concrete information from Suzanne and Megan in terms of what certain percentages reductions are, and then each of us voice if you know after we've had our general discussion, voice our um, opinion as to what we'd be comfortable with, and if we have. Uh, views on what we don't want to see cut. Mention them at that time so that it's not coming up later. Uh, but I think that might be help us move towards giving more concrete uh, direction to our leadership staff when the time is appropriate. But I think knowing what different reductions look like in terms of dollars will help us get that. I if I I think that's a good suggestion, Chris. I think what you're talking about might be a good segue to. What's in the memo, the charts on the second or 
Yeah, second. Can, I, can I just say one oh, thing? And I'm sorry, sorry. I didn't interrupt, but I don't think any of us are saying, I'm not saying I don't, I'm not realistic about the number of cuts that we are, you know, I've been saying this in, in my home and that we know that it was very clear with the vote going down to me that these cuts are there. All I am saying is I do not feel comfortable uh, saying, yep, 12% and whatever you bring me on April 3rd, I'm going to say, yeah, no problem. I may, but I don't feel comfortable saying today without knowing what that is, that it is. So I, I think that, I, I don't think any of us are saying we're not realistic about that there are cuts. So you had your hand up, so I don't want to ask. I just wanted to say one thing. The I think also the difference is with Natasha, what you said with how there wasn't as many admin when you were in high school. I think behavior behaviorally and mentally, the states of students then and now are a very different. And I think I, it's a lose lose no matter what. But I just want to make that shown that like how students act in a classroom now are a, are different, especially with one of our grades now. So I just wanted to put that out there. Ursula, mm -hmm. uh, Michelle, and then Ursula, okay. because you haven't had a chance. As um, Megan and a few others have said, we need to give the leadership team though the direction of where to go. We can't just say, just bring us back yeah. to the budget. We need to give them a target. And if they can hit the target, and bring it back they may come back and say okay we tried to hit your target this is what it is but we couldn't this is what we're proposing but we have to give them a starting place without a starting place they're going to meet for hours and try to figure out what do we what do we do so I, you know in finance we talked about 10 to 12 percent like if we give them that as like here's the target somewhere in this area if you can do it you can't bring up what you can but we need to give them a starting place. And I guess I, we all need to be clear that if we're asking for them to bring us information for us to look at and say, no, we don't like these cuts, try again. We've been here before. They don't appreciate the exercise. We've heard that. Hopefully we've all heard that and understood it. But we are we have a deadline to meet. We we don't have time to spend four months figuring this out. We started our budget process in October. We now have to condense this timeline of give them concrete information, and they're going to give us the recommendations on how they meet our students' needs with the, the amount that we think our community can shoulder. That's what we need to do. That's our responsibility is to go, our community can handle this size budget. Can you figure out how to do it with that size budget? And they will tell us whether or not it's possible given our current configuration. I, I think for us to go bring us back information based on some number that we've given you, and we may or may not approve it. And so we're right back at the same point of then they're going to have to run back with a new number. And how do we decide that? How are we determining what we think our communities are saying are fiscally responsible? If we just go, we don't like the cuts you make, try again. So we're going to run out of time, and then we'll be at a 13% decrease to the current budget. Michaela? Sorry, I just have a really quick uh, definition question. Yeah. I'm embarrassed to ask it now, like four years, or okay. how long I've been on the board. Can you clarify who exactly is on the leadership team? On the leadership team? Yeah. yeah. I, I think they could all stand up. They, I think the majority is here. Is it's, it's is central office central. administrator, so special ed director, curriculum director, business administrator, myself, louder, please. Yeah. director of technology, and then it's the principals from every building and the leadership team at U32. You want names? Uh, I think she wants nine. Um, is anyone non-administrative on the leadership team? Like are the uh, representative leadership? No, no, it's, uh, it's licensed administrative staff. Yeah, is the leadership team. Okay, Suzanne, I'm wondering if we could, if, before we make a final decision, if we could go through what it would mean tax-wise with the information that we have right now, and and maybe start with what it would mean to operate with the 87 percent, and then move into these two scenarios. Is that okay? And I'll give you the mic. 
Uh, well, I did the chart with four different scenarios. One is a level funded budget, so a 0% increase, uh, a 10% increase, a 12% increase, and then I showed the 13% decrease, which is an 87% of the current budget that we're operating in. So uh, we would actually experience a tax rate decrease on the equalized tax rate. And I want to focus on the equalized tax rate first because that is the number prior to the CLA impact. So if we could just think about that for a minute, on the 0% or level funded one, we would see a decrease in the equalized tax rate of about 12 cents. Is that the uh, document that's available to us? I think there might be some copies over there by Chris. I'm going to give everybody just a minute. So I am looking at the table at the bottom of page two in the memo that we handed out tonight. And it's titled local education spending models. And so I modeled four different uh, scenarios at top of page three. Oh, did it come out at the top? Yeah, okay, so the top of page three. <laughs> um, four different scenarios. One is a level funded budget. So that 0% means we don't increase over FY24. 10% is an increase of 10%, 12%, and then the 13% in parentheses is actually a decrease because that uh, models out that 87%. Like, what will that look like if we're forced to use 87%? And the budget we already performed was 16%. It was about 16.1. Um, the last column is the decrease in the equalized tax rate. And the equalized tax rate is the tax rate developed prior to the impact of the CLA. And so the CLA is how we come up with the individual town tax rates, but the equalized tax rate is your budget um, <clears throat> figure calculated out into a tax rate uh, by the per pupil spending. So we've got a decrease of about 12 cents on our level funded budget. We've got basically no pretty close to no change in your tax rate on a 10% local ed spending. So it's a 0 0.0084, like almost one per one penny, uh, about three and a half cents on a 12%. And then we'd see a 30 cent decrease on the 87% budget. And remind me the one budget we already put forward, what was that amount? It's the percentage increase or the no, tax the rate? The pennies. <laughs> the tax rate. I don't remember that. Uh, I, I, can, I can look it up. It was like 1.5855. So it was probably about nine cents. So point zero nine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions on that chart before I move? On. I just want to point out specifically the the bottom chart is of uh, taxes on one a uh, hundred thousand dollar home. Yes, mm -hmm. I was going to get down there. Oh, that was okay. next. I, I'm I'm on that first table. Oh, sorry. Any sorry. any more questions on the first sorry. table before I pop down to the second table? Sorry. No, it's okay. It's all right, Josh. <laughs> yeah. You roll a little faster than I do. <laughs> So yeah, the, the next table is the tax rate projection based on a hundred thousand dollar house. Because I had so many scenarios, I didn't want to try to do the 100, 200, 300 and give you five different charts. It would have been really messy. So try to boil it down to that. On the 0%, uh, you see we still have increases in every one of our towns except Worcester on a level funded budget. And I just thought that was super telling to see that even if we level fund our budget, we will see tax rate increases mm -hmm. in almost every one of our towns. And that's because of the, the CLA. bills that we cannot control that yes. come from the legislature. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's, that's why one of the reasons in finance yesterday, we had a long conversation about trying to not focus so much on the tax rate because there's so much of that tax rate that we have no, no impact on. We cannot change the fact that your CLAs are so low. We cannot change that factor. 
So on a, a level funded budget, you will still see tax rate increases in, in four of your five towns. Uh, in the 10%, you'll see that. And if you take those numbers, you're going to multiply it by whatever factor your house, you know, if you have a $300,000 house, multiply it by three. Uh, and obviously in your 13% decrease, you're going to see tax rate decreases because you've cut your budget by about $10 million. Mm -hmm. And one other big point, these tax rate projections are based upon a property yield <laughs> that has changed multiple times over this process. As you all know, this is a new number projected by AOE as of Friday the 8th. It is based on uh, budgets that passed. So now that they have some small handful of like 56 budgets that passed, the other 30 are going out and then there's still another like 24 that haven't even voted. Um, <clears throat> so they have increased that property yield slightly. I think it's like a $16 increase over the one that we were using in the annual report. As that number goes up, your tax rate goes down. The likelihood of it going up, given that 30 different budgets failed, those, those districts are all doing what we're doing and possibly looking at making cuts. So that property yield could very likely continue to go up, which would then decrease your tax rates further. I think that's everything I wanted to say about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I just clarify a question? Yes, go ahead. Well, I don't want to clarify a question. <laughs> Ask a question. So, um, so if I'm reading this correctly, for a three, so I would multiply it out if it's a three hundred thousand dollar house. <laughs> so I'm looking at if we went with twelve percent, you know, potentially twelve hundred dollar increase, correct? Mm -hmm. Which is not much different than what was put forward. And the reason why I bring that up is we are then in in order to really move this needle, we're we're talking about you know even below ten, even below zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? I you know so I just think that um, that's why. But again, that's also why we're saying it's a broader scope of things to that we're looking at because our context is very different. Well, and, and continuing to remember is a statewide funding system. So even if you move the needle down a little and the other 29 districts move the needle down a little, that 9785 is going to go up. And the closer to 10,000 that number gets, the, the much better all of these tax rates across the state will be. Yeah. Okay, so... We, we got to give them some guidelines. So your comment right now is really important, uh, Diane. So are you thinking of a lower number than 10%? Oh, sorry. It's Zach. Go ahead, yeah. Zach. I didn't see your hand. I apologize. I think, I think it's similar to where Diane was. But yeah, I think that I, I wouldn't be real comfortable going above 10% on that. I think that I, I feel good about going out to the voters saying, here is how the budget breaks down. You know, we we kept the per pupil you know, spending almost entirely level. You know, and there, you know, and here are the fact that they're out of our control. I think there is also just some genuine sticker shock. And I mean, there are plenty of people out there saying, I appreciate what you're doing, I respect what you're doing. You you have a really hard job. I just can't afford it. And for that type of person. They may acknowledge that this is that the things are out of control and still say, I can't afford it. Um, and so I think the 10% puts all of our towns end, you know, sort of end of the day increases at less than 20%. I think it's going to be really hard politically to go out there with a number that starts with a two um, on the on the increase. Thank you, Zach. You know, Except that it's going to look like that anyway. So, you know what I mean? So, because when we look, especially for Berlin, if you look at what our increase was, our increase was in that. And even if we drop it down, I think it's still going to look like that. So, you know, it's that challenge around the way it's the funding works. Uh, I do wonder, you know, a couple of things like Becca had mentioned uh, the ability for us to put together a resource 
resource list or at least a, you know, a sheet that shows what are the resources out there and for our families to, and our homeowners to know what what's really getting balanced on the back. It is sticker shock because to be very honest, when I used to look at our budget, it was well, it was Berlin's percentage of U32 and it was Berlin's. So I wasn't looking at all of them rolled in. And as that continues to increase, I think we're also feeling that that shock of what is consol a consolidated district look like, good, bad, or indifferent. It's a different different lens to that as well. But I, you know, so to me, there's those two things of it. Can we put together a sheet understanding the economics of our communities? And then two, I still haven't really heard when I'm looking at this in terms of wrapping my brain around it, what parts of this we know we can't change. Because there has to be things in here we know, you know, we're, we're not going to change the fuel. We're not going to, you know what I mean? There's certain things that I just would be helpful to have a sense of. Um, I would say that the tech center is one of the things that can't change mm -hmm. because that's a rolling six uh, semester average. And it's so it's based on prior uh, term mm -hmm. enrollment and an announced tuition and the state pays a portion of it that we actually pay, but they put this mythological revenue source in. Um, so tech center is not touch model. <laughs> and I would say that we potentially could look at fuel, the inflationary factor that was applied. Oh. So maybe I can reduce that percentage to bring it down a little bit. Um, and I could do that with the supplies per pupil that we budget for. We would obviously go back to all of the lines and look at those inflationary factors that are in there. Does it reflect more of our current reality? No, to cut your budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have, a, I have an estimated inflationary <laughs> factor in there for, you know, uh, to go, it's last year's actual plus an inflation for this year plus an inflation for next year. So I adjust mm -hmm. that. If you want to make an inflationary adjustment, would it be tied to inflation numbers that we get from government? I don't have one for next year, so I'm I'm making some assumptions about next year, and that, that's probably what I would adjust is what I'm getting at. Okay. So it's a budget, it's a plan, and that's why you have a fund balance to help if that budget doesn't hit its target. But those are things that we would obviously look at is lines across the district. So no, it wouldn't just be positions. We'd be looking at everything like that. So it's it's looking a little bit like we are kind of agreeing at a ten percent would be a, the exercise for them to be create creative on and and yeah and we we will go around to make sure that everybody is okay with that and that that, that is the guidance so we are agreeing that we want a budget to be looked at at ten percent and that they have they should look into the fund balance we. Do we want to provide an amount for that or just tell them that? How much is fund balance? It's, it's in the back of your package right now. It's one point. What we would touch is 1.2. I don't have it in front of me. There's 1.3 in there after the 2% reserve. After the 2%. Yeah. Yeah. So it's $2 million, basically $2 million. Yep. 2 million 58. That's not um, yeah. reserved. There's yeah. no set aside. So one one point three is after the two percent that the right. that we like to keep on hand. Yeah. So we should just be looking at the one point three percent. There's no reason for us to move away of again systems that we have created because we know that they have worked. Yeah, it should be untouchable. The two percent. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The two percent needs to be untouchable. Can you talk louder, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. If the PCB issue coming, I don't think, and that's coming from nowhere. But fund down. I think so there's not necessarily yeah. there you do have your capital reserve fund and we already have some some projects planned in there that we anticipate might help with the PCB projects we don't know what we don't know with PCBs yet yeah. so it is helpful to maintain some portion of your fund balance okay. and what portion should we save for PCB? I don't want to say that right now on the spot I'd like to take some to time to look at it and think about it that's yeah. why I was saying give us give us a number We'll yeah. go back and we will consider fund balance and try to see what we could use. So, I just wanted to ask, I have other districts gotten numbers back for remediation. Yeah. 
on and I know everybody's projects it's are different, different. it's different know, yeah it, it would be hard because it would be who is available to do the remediation we put out a request for it's proposals not, is the timing there's too many factors to no, there, it, okay yeah although what is this where is the state funding at this point uh, the, just, the, the state gonna, funding is only on the current the design. work that's being done yeah. the the investigation the yeah. testing so they've authorized two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars and that's it yeah. They, they have not allotted any money for the remediation. And the remediation could be containment or it could be removal. So without knowing what the scope of that project is, we don't know what we have, have to reserve. But we do know that some of the projects we already had planned are also associated with PCBs. So for instance, we have projects for LED lighting that's one year out from here. And frequently PCBs are found in the, the lighting. So I'm just putting out there that we may already have some money in there in the capital reserve fund. Yeah. Just building building on Diane's point, I do think it would also be helpful when this budget comes back, whatever we say to, to cut by, if we could have a really clear table that says, with the last budget that failed, this is what your potential increase we thought was. And then with this budget, this is what we think your potential increase is per town. Because I think that's going to be really helpful in communication that we made a really good faith effort to balance cutting the budget with still being able to, you know, educate our, our kids. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions before we go around and see if we're comfortable with the 10%? Can you take any more public comments? We, we will take, Larry, I've been seeing your hand, I'm not trying to ignore you, but we will have public comments at the end of the board discussion. Sorry. Although it's just. I, 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 I would argue it would be helpful to hear from the people who are voting before, we decide. before I decide what I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not just for Larry Gilbert, anybody else. <laughs> yeah, and just that we could get out the it's the meeting of the board. So I just want to, you know, so okay, go ahead, Carol. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, I think it would be really unfortunate to go back uh, to the voters and have them reject uh, your next uh, proposal. Um, I have no insights into what everybody else in the community is thinking. 10% to me, you have to have really good reason why that's as low as it can go. That's just just one person. So um, I have no suggestions on exactly where the money, uh, what, where the cuts are going to go. That's not uh, that's the point for you, obviously. I do think that um, you don't want to have to go through this again. The, there is a slight, maybe maybe more than slight mistrust of what's going on in this uh, in this institution, um, and that's reflected in the vote. And so, if um, if that has to happen again, it will erode the trust even even more. And so, I would. Where did you all be brave? And this is a this is a tough year, no question about it. Tough decisions have to be made. I don't think I need this because I can use my teacher voice too. <laughs> um, I would, name them? Sorry. Yeah, my name is Lee Gary. Thank you. Um, I'm from Worcester, in case anybody wants to know that. Um, I would just really encourage you to think about the conversations that you had in coming up with the last budget. And what I'm talking about is feedback that you got from the um, taxpayers about what they hold sacred, what they don't want to have cut, such as the counselors and the nurses at a couple of our schools in particular that you were talking about. I would really hate to spend a lot of time rehashing conversations that we've had before. I know we need to, you know, make cuts or whatever. And Larry, I, I know what you're saying about 10%. But if you looked at, I mean, in past years, if you look at 10%, you know, 15% and whatever, 20%, there are substantial differences. But you have to be able to look at sort of them line by line to be able to tell. 
um, where it comes from. But I just would hate to see you spend a lot of time going over things that had been put to bed, basically. Thank you, Bruce. That's my comment. I um I think um, my history is usually going to like what um Kelly Sloan about healing. Sorry, I think you know that when we when we go into vote, it has the tax increase rate right there, and then it's the sticker shock. I think that's what a lot of people had a bad reaction to and they voted down. And knowing that is really important, and like seeing what that is going to be for each town is going to be is it something that's going to pass or not. And I think that you're right, like something under 20 is going to be a lot better than going in and seeing, I think in no sex was 21 or something. And it's just, it's too, 20 something is a big difference than something a little bit under 20. So I think, you know, having a good understanding of what the voters are going to go in and look at and be able to be comfortable voting in support of is important. And, and knowing what that number is, like this part is really confusing. I don't understand it. 10% or it's, it's hard to know. I think like just, Focusing on that number of like, what is it going to, what are people going to go in and look at and vote for or vote against? And knowing that you, you know, went in and made our decisions and made it, made it better is going to go a long way. I don't think, um, I mean, personally, I, you know, I, I think if we get behind it and, and, and then another thing I'm going to say is with the April 3rd, you know, having a, a budget submitted by April 3rd, that what, when are the times that we're going to have public input? Because you got to know what people want, and there has to be a chance to people weigh in during the process while it's still ongoing, not just, okay, here it is, and we have one opportunity to come in. So we were more meetings with chances that people can come in and say what they want to see. So the better if it's one meeting, it's not really enough, and you're going to end up having people more to support. I'll learn from Berlin at this Cycles and it's more of a logistical because of your April 3rd deadline. Something we did on the school board at Berlin, the previous budgets that were being brought back to us by the leadership team or the superintendent's office at the time. Or, and I apologize to the leadership team because this might be more work for you, but they would bring us um, 357. So we we get a look at what a 3% budget would look like, a 5% budget, and a 7%. So Something because you have to hit that April 3rd deadline, maybe a 6, 8, 10, 12 option to make informed decisions. Okay. Hey, Mark, I'm going to need some help making the transition because I now have to allow some people online. <laughs> Just one minute. Great. Yeah. Lisa, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, I, I think first I just wanted to ask for clarification about public comment and whether now is the opportunity or if there's still going to be a space after this, just for everyone is it, who is. It, there'll be space after the meeting unless you have a comment right now for the budget specifically. But after the meeting or after the budget conversation? Wasn't after, any... at the end of this discussion, at the end of this meeting, you will have an opportunity before we adjourn. Okay, uh, I guess just for clarity, then I will just speak now. Um, I'll just say, chime in and say that I found it disappointing that it was argued so forcefully during this meeting that it's been crystal clear all along that in the end, the budget will hinge on cuts of our school staff. I know that number of 80% of our budget um, being staffing has been articulated repeatedly, but I would also argue that before tonight has not been said loud and clear that in order to achieve our budgetary goals, school staffing will have to, have to be the focus of our sacrifice. Um, I agree this has been implied, but we need to be more conscious about explicit communication. And in that vein, um, I would ask us to commit right now to be explicit about the fact that when we cut 10% of our budget through student facing staff, uh, our students will feel that impact and they will be adversely impacted. Uh, I do think it's disingenuous to say that the admin team could propose a budget with those level of cuts that would continue to meet our students' needs. Our schools are struggling right now with current levels of staffing and less staff equals more struggle. Um, I think we owe it to our communities to be clear about that. Um, we need our communities to be affordable, but we also owe it to them to be honest about what the impact on their students will be. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. It, Lauren?
Hi, sorry. Um, well, Lisa was a lot more eloquent than me, but um, I'm, I just, I have a couple comments and then one question. Um, I have two children at the Doty School and I have the utmost appreciation for every adult in that building. And I just think these um, budget talks are really hard. I understand for everyone. And I just want it to be stated that the teachers and adults, all the staff in our building are amazing and integral parts of the success of our kids daily life in school. Everyone knows that, I just think it's important. Um, for the reason, this budget process, I would just ask the school board and the administration to recognize how stressful this is for the teaching staff and the uncertainty of this process. And so I would ask that there is clarity for the teachers and the people in the building from the top level administration that is a clear across all of these buildings so that teachers know what is happening with the school budget um, and that they can feel uh, at least informed about the process. I felt that the fact that a week went by after the budget failed, uh, and then this is our first meeting about the budget. I recognize you've met um, on Monday and Tuesday, and there's a lot of work that goes into this. Um, but it was a week of stress and unknown, and the communication thus far from the administration and the school board has been, uh, I think, uh, lacking from a parent perspective. And I just hope that you recognize that the, stra the stress that this causes for teachers in your district is huge as well. Um, I appreciate the board asking about administration cuts. My question is, um, have administration contracts been signed? Is there a statute that says that like principal contracts were signed in February and so those positions are untouchable? So that's just a question that I would like clarification on. And again, I really appreciate your work and time. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Shannon. Hi there, I'm Shannon Miller. I'm a parent of two at U32 and one at Berlin. Um, I just wanted to make a couple comments. One was that I've heard a few people say to reach our budgetary goals. And I think we can all agree that this budget is no one's goal. Um, no one set out with these intentions um, and it's really an unfortunate situation. So just putting that out there. Um, I also just wanted to show a lot of support for the administrative team. Um, I know that there, it feels like, what are they doing? They're making decisions. Um, to insinuate that these folks are not student facing, I think sounds really inaccurate to me. Um, I think the person I've heard from the most at U32 this year is probably Jess Wells. Uh, admittedly, that's probably my kid's fault that I hear from Jess Wells. <laughs> um, but I do want to say that if anyone is, is facing students, it's these guys, and I really appreciate them. Um, I'm also, you know, as an employee, a person who likely will lose my job as a result of budget cuts. I understand the position that we're in. I understand what it is to be in that administrative room, and it is hard. Nobody is taking these decisions lightly. This is not a fun thing to cut staff. Um, there is not a person on the list that anyone is excited to take off in a situation like this. But our role is really to protect students, right? Protect students, not just make things feel fair or good for adults. And that is awful. It's a terrible position to be in. Um, I feel for all of you making these decisions. Um, I'm hoping for the best for our kids. Um, and really just want to appreciate all of you doing this super hard work. So thanks. Thank you so much, Shannon. And the last comment, Hannah Brown. Hi there, um, I'm Hannah. I'm um, in Middlesex. I have uh, three kids, two of whom are at Romney. Um, first, thank you for all your hard work. Um, I really appreciate uh, it. And I don't, nobody who's not, um, they're making decisions um, and visa your position. Um, I one comment, and I, I just want to say that I really appreciate um, Natasha's comment about saying that um, uh, disagreeing does not convey mistrust. Um, and I want to show support for the leadership team too. And, and I really like what was just said about them being student facing um, too. Um, I, I, from my perspective, when I've seen the last um, few years of budgets too, I mean, it has been um, notable to me um, that that there there haven't been as clear administrative cuts as teachers, counselors, nurses. Um, uh, 
and and bringing that up to, is not an expression of distrust um, at all. Um, we all have that's just what we're here for. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, and 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 I'm saying this out of maybe there are other people who are as ignorant um, as I am, um, and maybe it's good for everybody if if I say this, as seeing what's happening with the Rumney and Doty pre-K and kindergarten, and having looked at some of the um, reconfiguration uh, schematas, I want to I, I want that to be talked out talked um, about a little more out loud, are we talking about closing schools? Um, and if that's the ultimate, I mean, it seems like that's the direction. That's what everybody is whispering about at bus stops. Um, is Doty going to close? Is Callis going to close? And um, I don't know how taboo that is to talk about. Um, and if that's where things are headed um, anyway, um, I, I would just really appreciate more clarity because everyone is whispering about it. And if that's the goal to really, um, really slash our budgets, and that would be across the board, buildings, overhead, administration, staff, whatever, um, maybe I've been missing part of the conversation and that, that can't happen for another year or two, but it looks like we're sliding into that. And I would like just some more clarity around that. So thank you so much. And thanks for your work. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. Uh, oh, sorry. Hi, I'm going to turn the mic on. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your comments. We're going to go back into dialogue with the board. Uh, I'm not trying to not answer questions, but we don't go back and forth with public comments. Those are valid comments, and we appreciate everybody's public comments. Uh, so let's go back to the question. I think what we're hearing is that maybe we have to also look at below 10%. So, so I think we need to give them a parameter between six and 10%, and it might not be attainable, right? Because the structure that we have right now might not allow us to do the necessary cuts we need to do to come to that percentage and still serve our students and provide, you know, meet student need and provide the opportunities that they need. Uh, Ursula? If we were gonna look at that six to 10% range, which I would support, can we ask administration to look at what reconfiguration ideas would be feasible next year that might help us? Is that something that they can look at while they're being creative? Uh, <clears throat> we, yes, I think that, but I, I just want to be really clear. Your articles of agreement prevent the closure of any school without a vote. So feasibly, if the configuration option relates to closure, it cannot happen in time for next year's budget. That doesn't, I mean, so, so Some yes, right. There are things that we could come back to you and talk to you about, but, but the, to the point of closing a school, that is not yeah. something that you could right. do yeah. in that amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. We need to put an article in front of our electorate to okay. close a school or to change the articles of agreement. Right. But that's not a conversation for now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's not a conversation to, to, to have right now. It, but right now, you know, so it's not being transparent. Yes, we are looking at configuration, but we are looking at configuration not under the lens of just saving money. We're looking at a configuration under the lens of how best we can serve our students, how best can we give more opportunities to our <clears> students, <throat> and by doing that, serve our communities. And we have been talking a lot about having a larger sense of community too, but we will engage with the community on those conversations for tonight, just looking at the clock too, it's like we need to give them some solid guidance so that they can come back to us with some, you know, with some information so we can make an informed decision. So if, if we're leaning towards six to eight, six to 10 percent, what we got six, eight, and 10, um, someone mentioned having those three different mm -hmm. looks, mm -hmm. um, so that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. All right. Joshua. Uh, may I suggest one parameter to look at is the uh, the sixth grade students mm -hmm. and how much, if any, money that would save uh, to, to combine them into the middle school. So it's six, seven, eight. Yes. And we can discuss the benefits that that brings to yeah. our community as well. Yeah. Exactly. 
Am I hearing agreement from everybody? I was just looking for a thumbs up at least. In terms of what? The six, six to eight, six, eight, and 10%. Okay. Yes. All thumbs up? Yeah. All thumbs up. Okay. Clear guidance. Okay. okay. You do have another question, or somebody behind me has another question? I'm not seeing. Okay. So I just I just want to say that you're exactly right. When we're looking at reconfiguration or configuration, it isn't being driven by the cost. It is our hope that it will expand or do that, but we're be doing it and that's also why we're not quickly putting forward a vote on this. And it's also why we want to be sure because we're aware of the whispering and the nervous and the anxiety. Um, that's going on. So we want to get that open conversation occurring sooner rather than later, even though it adds to the plate of what we're considering. But we are mindful of how that feels, and we want to just be sure that the open conversations start. And, but it is important to the cost. Yeah, 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 it is. It is. That and, and, yeah. Right, but we've been yeah, told for I years can... that consolidation is going to save, and we've never seen that. Yeah, and, and but we also have to we also have to you know admit that the only reason we're able to keep our small schools open right now both Dodi and Kalan is because we're consolidated right we all understand that because we consolidated and we are able to share the costs across our if we had independent schools right now we wouldn't be able to do it know that because Dodi and Callis were the ones who didn't bond anything and they were self-sufficient I think so we don't know what much of that would have happened so to say that they're the only staying open because they small schools grants say they're only staying open now because we're supporting them as a district as a whole. We are supporting each other as a whole. Okay. It's too, That's... It's too speculative. Okay. So uh, is that enough guidance or is that is that enough guidance yeah. to move into the next conversation? I think yeah. you've got to go back to your timing and your vote conversation yeah. and whether or not you are contemplating adding additional meetings. So let's go back to the timeline. Yeah. Let's try to open my calendar here just so we'll be a few here. So if we're gonna add an informational meeting, oh, sorry, I'm just trying to open my calendar. So if you if the board is looking for a first presentation of the six, eight, and ten on April third. You you could be prepared to pick one at that date. You, you could also decide to add a meeting at that time. You could say now, I think we want another meeting. Let's also have a meeting on April 10th. And I'm just picking the Wednesdays because you're used to Wednesdays. Um, well, I'll pause there. Do you want to anticipate two, a two meeting? Um, Format for that? Yeah. So do we wanna do we wanna move approving our budget to April 10th and having an informational meeting on the third? Not informational, but having a meeting to look at it and have community meeting engagement on the third, and then we would adopt a budget on the 10th. And when would we vote? I think and that then we will move it down. Yeah. And would we then be able to have another vote? If we needed it, May 7th July still gives you one more chance before July 1st. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just. 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 Right. Just. 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 Yeah, and, and, I, and I think we don't want to be like counting on a second vote. We want to get this no, miraculously with the help of everybody. And also the understanding of the community that this is a step forward to where we're trying to get. We can make all of the savings at once this year, right? Like we, we are setting ourselves in a steady path to sustainability, but not everything can magically happen this year and, and have enough savings to represent a good tax um, lowering the tax because our CLA is so, so horrible. Well, so, okay, it, is that, so we're agreeing with that. We would move it down. We will yeah. run those dates. That we'll have a presentation on the third with the decision on the 10th. On the 10th. That's the what we're thumbs up being. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And you wouldn't be stopped from making a decision on the third right. if you felt like you had what you needed. It just yeah. starts everything sooner. But yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think what you, what 
I'm hearing though, and Chris, it would require that we not have a policy committee meeting on the 10th if we're holding that as a second board meeting. Steph, when you have the chair of that. <laughs> you better, better say, say yes. yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Or, or a long night. Yeah. Either way. Okay. 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 But I do want to be, you know, just like, so again, I am not saying that I'm going to kick it back that I don't think that's any of our intentions. I think we all just need to understand it. But I also want to be very transparent that this timeline, because of the budget going down, the reality is, is it doesn't have the opportunity for the community input. So, so, you know, you had asked when, when are the conversations with the community, and, and I want to be realistic and transparent about what our thinking is behind that. Mm -hmm. I, I think, think that's, that's a good point. point. Also, it's, it's a good segue. segue. The finance committee, committee did talk about whether or not you sent a survey out, out a post-budget survey. Yeah. And, and it, it gets some, some information um, just, just about, about why. It's a pretty, pretty simple, simple survey. survey. What, did you, what did you vote? What do you want what the board, board and administration to know? To know? Um, um, you know, we, we could words that those, but that would that at least would be, at be a method, method to get some input, some input, if that's helpful. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're, we're adding, adding that meeting, meeting and we are going to send a survey out. And then we're going to vote on the seventh. And then in yeah, May, yeah, 7th, May, 7th, May 7th, 7th, May 7th, May 7th. And you and actually have, have some time, time but we don't, we don't have to send the warning out for that. We should, we should start communicating that our intention is to vote on May 7th. Yeah. And, and, and we'll put some communication after, after this meeting out so they know where we are and that we're moving forward. Okay. Do we also need to decide today to mail versus not mail? We should. We should. Yeah. We should. We should. We should. We should. We should. We need an action, need an action for, for that. For so that. So we, we would need a motion on the table, the table to to, to mail or not mail the ballot. Not mail because it extends the deadline that we are already up again. However, if we do move to not mail ballots, would this go out of our budget focus? Okay. So Chris, Chris, it. Yeah, second yeah, set. Any, any discussion? discussion? What would be the date without mailing them? What would be the one? What date? It's May seventh. It's May seventh because you added the tenth. Right. Yeah. We added the meeting. Right. Yeah. If you, so if you, if you chose decided it fast, would it push it out? Would it push it out? Yes. 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 So we're yes. pushing yes. it out. Yeah. 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 If the tenth is your decision, correct. Yeah. Yeah. And this would allow a lot of people still ask for for absentee ballots, and there would still be twenty days for them to get it. So yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh. Oh. And, yeah. well, I'll uh, save that for the comment at the end. All those in favor, favor by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We're going to move gonna into, into our finance committee. committee. And we have, I need a motion on the table, table please, to approve the physical security system project bid. Somebody is in that page. Daniel. I move that the board of awarding the Washington Central Unified Union School District 2024 Security System Project contract to safety systems of Vermont in an amount not to exceed $430,531. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. Second. Second. Any questions? questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. And that's yeah, supposed to approve the teachers' resignations of the staff on page, page 20. 20. I move that we that approve we the resignation of David Matthews, EMES school Thank you. 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 Thank any, ups, any, ups, any, any opposed? opposed? Hearing none, Hearing none the motion the carries. Motion carries. Hey, hey. Moving. Moving. Okay, it's the okay, Superintendent, Superintendent Search Committee, Committee update. update. Is the, uh, did I miss anything or something? No. I heard people online that they're having a second one at the end of it. Oh, no. no. 
Proceeding in a timely manner, uh, we uh, we met this this past weekend. We have our questions. There's members of the committee here. We finalized our our interview questions. We have we have reviewed um, applicants, and we will move into interviews. And we are on track on our timeline. That's all we have to share. So. so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Back before the middle school was built, mm -hmm. we needed to pass a bond. I know, I've been here a long time. <laughs> we needed to pass a bond. So we needed the communities to be behind us. And the way that we went about, one of the ways we went about doing it was to have a meeting in each of the towns. Now I know we're short on time, but I know that there's school board people from each of the towns. And I really think, you know, front porch forum is great, and it does reach people that sometimes don't come out, but it's not the same thing as, as having a meeting like at the elementary school where people are invited to come and they can get sort of hashed around. So I just throw that out as a possibility of something that maybe can happen pretty quick. If, if everybody decided to have one on the same night, all the towns could have their um, informational aids. And it may not work. I know there's a lot of, you know, there are a lot of Robert's rules of order and things like that. So it might not happen, but I thought I would just. Thank you. Thank you. And our, our next meeting, of course, there is a college. Yeah, but thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try. Let me see if there's anybody else. There's nobody else online. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, I think the, the one thing I should not reconsideration about um, the sixth grade and maybe taking that and having it all be in the grade two. I think like practically, that's a very, very, very good idea. I just, for the, the idea of doing that next year though, just seems harsh for kids who are, but would be going into sixth grade and coming their final year at their elementary school and then having that being taken away from them, you're never gonna have a chance to do, I know some of the small schools do a lot of like, Special things for their for their sixth grade kids, and it would that would just you know that would be sad. So, um, but I think it's a great idea. To new energy. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so with that, if we need to move into executive session. So I'm wondering Sorry. if our clerk. Oh yeah, let's. Uh, well, no, let's, 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 let's go. Like, can we? Is that okay? Can we have the motion to go to second session and yeah. then uh, after that go to? I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, 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 Michelle. Yeah, I'm like on a roll right now. Okay, so second. Michelle moves second. and second by Natasha. All those in favor and uh, to include Megan Roy. Okay. Yeah. Include Megan Roy. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Please use the facilities, and we'll see you there in eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs>